Hey there, church family. Uh, this is Connor from the Hot Springs campus, and I'm so excited to get to bring you the Diva today uh, during this holiday season. And, and look, I recognize that the holiday season for some of us, uh, it's it's awesome, it's, it's carefree, it's great. Um, probably for most of us, uh, we know that there's gonna be some conflict. Uh, there's gonna be some relational tension even going into it. And so I hope to speak to some of that right now and so I'm in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17 through 19. And I'm going to paraphrase for us. But the prophet Elijah, uh, we find him uh, in, a, in a great spot. In fact, he's seeing God do uh, miracle after miracle after miracle. One time he's, he's hungry and so God sends down some, some ravens to bring him food. And then he goes to a widow's house and he asks her for some bread. And she says, well, I only have a small amount of flour and oil. Well, he says, well, just go ahead and just make it. And so she ends up never running out of flour and oil for days and days. He has food. Well, then the widow's son, he grows ill. Well, Elijah prays for him. And all of a sudden, he's made well again. And then we reach the, the, the climax of all the miracles. And he is he's being challenged by prophets of Baal, who is, a, who is a false god. And so Elijah doesn't back down from the challenge. He says, look, who, who's ever God can burn up this, this pile of wet wood first, that's the one true God. And so, of course, the prophets of Baal, they're, they're chanting to their God, and nothing happens. Well, then Elijah simply prays to God, and, and God sends down this, this fire from heaven, and the fire burns up, all the wood, all the rocks in the area, and even all the water in the area. And so can you picture just the, the confidence that Elijah must have had seeing all these different miracles? Well then listen, in one moment, all that shifts. He hears from this, this woman named Jezebel and she threatens Elijah with his life. And for him, that was enough to send him running off, scared. In fact, he was so depressed that he wanted to take his own life. Now, you might be thinking, come on, Elijah, why'd you, why'd you get so scared from just one person saying one, one mean thing to you whenever you saw God do all these miracles? Listen, I'm the same way. All of us, we're all the same way. We can see God's goodness and his faithfulness all year long, miracle after miracle after miracle. But then in one moment, Something doesn't go our way. There's, there's conflict that happens. There's tension that happens. There's bitterness or anger. And all of a sudden, we can pick, take this problem and we magnify it. And it grows in, in, in our own mind. It grows bigger than even God's goodness, which obviously isn't true. And so what does God tell Elijah to do? We pick up in chapter 19, verse 11. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in that wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And listen, that's where Elijah found God. It was in that, that quiet, still moment that he got the confidence back to go do what God had called him to do. So for us, what does this mean? Listen, our, our, our challenge is this, going into this holiday season. We need to get alone before God. We need to still our own heart before him. That's the only way that we can even make it through. Is if we get by ourselves with him and then let him speak to us in those quiet moments. Listen, it, it, it wasn't in the earthquake or, or in, the, in the fire or, or in, the, in, in the big wind. It was in that small, quiet moment where God met Elijah. And that's where Elijah got the courage and gained the strength to go back out there. And so for, for us, I want to challenge you. Get alone before God. That's the only way that any of us can even, even make it. And I believe that God's going to do some great things in all of us during this, during this holiday season to be salt and light wherever we might go. 
Would you bow your heads? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for us. God, we love you so much. And I'm so thankful, God, that you're, that you're not in the, in the earthquake or, or in the fire or in these, in these big, giant moments. But God, you're in those, those quiet moments, those, those small moments that we tend to not really want to want to even get into. But God, right now, I just pray for, for, for myself and also anybody else listening. I just I pray that we would quiet our own heart in your presence because God, it's in your presence. One moment in your presence, God, it can change everything. So we just say that, that we need you, especially during this season. Because some of us might be dealing with, 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 with tension or, or conflict or, uh, or anger. God, it's in your presence that those things shift, that we see, we see you in view of who you really are, and we see our problem in the small view that it, that, that, that it really is. We love you, Lord, and for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Have a blessed holiday season.